Hey, what's up? Tyson France with Motion Revolver here. Thanks a lot for purchasing the Debate Night graphics package for After Effects. We're going to dive right in here to show you how to customize the project. So we're in After Effects here, and uh, we have the project already opened. Um, this is actually uh, Adobe After Effects uh, CC 2019, just so you know what version we are working with in this tutorial. Uh, in the project window, you'll see that we have four folders numbered uh, one through four. Um, number one is where we import any of the assets that we're going to use in our project, whether it's uh, audio, video, images, things like that. Folder number two is where we customize the global appearance. We will come back to that in a second. Number three and number four. Number three is where we customize the intro animation itself. And then number four is where we customize all of the supplemental graphics, such as backgrounds, lower thirds, uh, side panels, and split screens. So going back to step number two, uh, which is the customize appearance step, we'll open up this composition and uh, move our timeline or playhead here somewhere in the timeline that it shows uh, the graphics. And um, we'll see we essentially have a uh, an interface here to click on these swatches and edit uh, the attributes, uh, mostly colors. But uh, this is going to change the overall global appearance of the entire project. So anything that we change here is going to reflect throughout the entire project within every graphic. So the left side here pertains to just the uh, show intro and the right side pertains to just the supplemental graphics. Um, so we can do this one of two ways. We can either click on uh, the elements within the comp window here, uh, click on the swatches, and then we can go to our effects control window. And uh, I'm actually gonna close this, give ourselves a little bit more real estate here to work with. So when we click on these swatches, if we have our effects control panel open somewhere within our interface, we'll see the effects that we can edit. Uh, if you don't see the effects control, just go up to window and make sure that um, effects controls is checked right there and uh, you'll be able to do it this way. Otherwise, we can navigate through the, uh, the timeline and twirl these open and uh, reach the attributes that way. But obviously this is a little bit more cumbersome and messy because we have to, we actually have to uh, twirl open layers and then find the attribute to fix it. So I prefer just clicking on the swatch and doing it that way. But we'll start here at the very, at the very beginning um, with color A, color B, figure color, title color, and star color. So if we click on color A, we'll see it's a red color that is associated with the background. Now, if we change that, if we click on map white to, if we want that to be say like more of a, I'll change it to something a little more obvious, change it to a green, we'll see that updated to green. And if we want this blue side instead to be purple, click on map white to, and uh, then we change it to a purple. So as you'll see, the supplemental graphics side is independent of the show open. So you can have a slightly different looking show open if you'd like and uh, have a different um, color palette for the, uh, for the supplemental graphics. So I'll revert this back to the original. But um, the figure color pertains to the figures that appear in the show open. If you're going to replace the figures with cutout images or something like that, you don't need to worry about this step because um, you're not going to be using the figures anyway. But if you want to keep the figures, but you want them to be a different color, this is where you would update that. Um, same thing with the titles. This is where uh, the candidate's name is presented. So if you want the text to remain white against that black background, which is probably provides the best readability, but let's say instead of blue, you wanted that to be red, you would just change the blue portion of that to uh, red. And now we have a red uh, highlight on our text instead of blue. And then this star color pertains to the stars that are in the background, but just the white stars. Uh, we click on the map white two again and change it to something obvious like green. Now you can see we have neon green stars in our background. And then same exact process for the customization on uh, the supplemental side. We have an example of the split scene, of the split screen graphic here just to kind of uh, give you an idea of what it looks like. And it's the exact same thing. If I change the map white two on the red to something different, it's gonna produce a different result here as well. So we can do stuff where like, if we wanted the entire thing to be red, we could just use our little uh, color picker and change map white to the same red color and now we have an entirely red background. So that's another uh, pretty neat looking effect as well. 
but we'll revert that back to the original well as well. And then last but not least is the text color. And yes, as you guessed, if we change this to a different color, all of our supplemental text changes to whatever color we have set here. So those are our global controls that we can change that affect the appearance of all the graphics within the project. So moving on to step number three, where we edit our intro animation, we have four steps within here as well. Uh, step one, customize show title, customize candidates, edit the scenes, and then finally compile the animation. So up here at step one, um, as mentioned in the item description, this project supports up to 10 candidates. Uh, in recent um, United States political debates in uh, 2019, we've had a very large amount of candidates uh, vying for presidential um, nomination on the, the Democratic side. Uh, I think at one point it was a total of uh, almost 30 candidates. So. Um, but they split the debate nights up into a total of 10 candidates maximum. So that's why I decided to build a project with up to 10 candidates so that it could actually uh, accommodate something like that. So customizing the show title, uh, we twirl this open and uh, there's a setup folder inside. And if we open up that show title build, uh, we can see this is our already pre-built main title. So word one corresponds to debate, and then word two corresponds to night. Now these are both editable text layers. Um, so if we wanted to change debate to something like, uh, it, you know, we can even change, I'll just leave it debate since that's the uh, theme, uh, debate politics, something like that. So we'll change that second word to politics, and then we go back here, and now we have debate politics. So we have a, a totally different looking you know, title. We can update this text to be whatever we need it to be. Um, but we'll revert that back to debate night. So that's how we customize the text in the title. And then net, the uh, network ID, um, this is mostly for if uh, you were to import like a network logo, uh, say you're you're creating a project for uh, a news channel or news station, you might import uh, whatever that logo is into here. And then uh, we also have uh, a text layer that you can edit as well. And then the main show intro. So this is the, the main animation that occurs at the very beginning with the title. And we have a camera layer that controls the uh, main animation. So this animates on over the course of one second, drifts for a second, and then animates off over the course of a second. So if you wanted to change the timing of this title, you would want to uh, play around with the keyframes here to make it either longer or shorter or uh, whatever you wanted to do with the intro. Moving on to step two, is where we actually customize the candidates. So we have candidate images and then we have candidate names. So opening up the candidate images, um, we can twirl this open as well, just to kind of show you. I'm gonna open up the first candidate just to show you what's going on here. Uh, candidate number one. Now, these compositions are set up in a way where you can change the name. So for example, candidate number one, if it were, um, either a male or female candidate, it doesn't really matter because all of our options are already imported into this comp. So let's say, for example, if candidate one wasn't a female, we could change this to one of the male candidates down below. And we have five options for each. Uh, we have five female candidate figures and five uh, male candidate figures. And it looks like I have to update this because they are all the same. So yeah, I will have to update that. Um, anyway, so we'll leave this reverted back to the original uh, female candidate. Um, and then as I was mentioning, uh, the end of the composition has brackets with the name insert name here. So let's say for example, uh, we wanted to keep track of which candidate we were working with. So instead of just leaving it candidate one with insert name here, if 
just going by one of the current uh, candidates that's running for president. Uh, we'll go with Elizabeth Warren, and we'll change that name to Warren. Candidate two, if it were one of the male candidates, we might change that name to say Joe Biden and uh, so on and so forth. You can see how we can change everything so that we know which kind of, uh, which candidate we're working with. But I'm gonna revert those back to the originals. And then in this setup folder is where you'll see, uh, you don't really have to worry about these because they're already set up, uh, but this is where you would find the edited figures uh, for each politician. Now we're gonna come back to adding uh, actual candidate images in just a second. I just want to move on to editing the names as well. So same process here with the file or with the comp name. You can change candidate one like we did. We added Warren for, for candidate one. We can add Warren here for, for candidate one as well um, just so that we keep everything, uh, everything consistent and we know who we are working with. So each composition is the same, so I'm, I'm only really going to show one. There's no point in, in uh, going over the rest, but first name, last name, both text layers are editable, uh, so you can change this as you see fit. Okay, so going back real quick to the candidate images. So let's say, for example, instead of using these generic uh, faceless figures, we wanted to actually use an image of one of the female candidates. Um, now, legally, I'm not allowed to do that, but what I do have is uh, somewhere, I have an image of, uh, where are you, okay. I'm going to import an image of a woman that I have already cut out here. So, this composition's fairly large. It's 1,000 pixels wide by 2,000 pixels tall, which isn't huge, but it's, it's large enough for our you know current purposes. So the image I've placed in here is actually on the smaller side, but I'm just going to scale it up, and I'm going to try to keep the figure's feet right near the bottom of the composition um, and make sure that it doesn't get cut off at the top either. So I'm just going to just going to do that. And I'm going to turn our original um, generic silhouette off as well. And I'm gonna jump ahead. I'm gonna jump ahead to uh, the main intro and I'm gonna show you what this final result looks like. So now, as you can see, instead of a generic figure, now we have the image that we just inserted into this composition. So it's a little bit more realistic. It's a little bit more personal. Um, Clearly, you're legally allowed to use images of politicians in your projects. It's just that uh, uh, we're not allowed, not allowed as Video Hive authors to, to do that. That's why uh, I did not provide actual um, candidate images within the project. But this just sort of illustrates how you do that. Now, as far as cutting the image out, there's a separate tutorial included with the project that shows you how to cut an image out from its background without needing Photoshop or any other program. You could just import the image into After Effects and then use the pen tool to cut the background out. Please watch that tutorial if you're not familiar with the process. It's very simple um, and I think you'll be pleased with the results. But we will go back to our candidates where we were editing our images and our names. We've already covered both of those things. So we're gonna, we're gonna move on to step number three, which is edit the scenes. Um, now we have our master background, which is real simple with the colors and that doesn't really need to be edited. So we're not gonna worry about that. We open up scene one and you'll see scene one contains uh, candidates one, two, and three. So these layers here, all these yellow layers we can see pertain to candidate one, candidate two, and candidate three. So I'm gonna set this to quarter resolution just for the sake of speed of rendering. As you can see, we uh, we cycle through here. The camera layer, which is where all the keyframing occurs, has um, uh, markers placed to where the different candidate uh, candidates appear. We can change the timing of these keyframes if we want to edit the timing of the animation. And each of these compositions works the exact same. They're just split up into 
uh, three scenes for better management so that it's not as cumbersome. Um, so when we go to our scene end tag, that is just the title. That's just our title uh, with none of the candidates. And then when we go to step four, this is our main compilation. Um, so this contains transition layers right here. If we toggle open uh, the setup folder, you'll find that we have our pre-rendered transition animation here. This is how we transition from one scene to the next. We also have our soundtrack composition where we would drop whatever audio uh, or soundtrack that we want to use. And that's automatically placed within uh, the intro. Um, now, say we get to, to the point with the, uh, the election process and the debates where there's only two, three, five candidates that, that are actually debating anymore. Well, that's where we could remove scenes from the main animation. So say we only had five or six, we would just turn these two layers off in scene three since we don't need them and move the, the end tag back to that point. And then we have a much shorter animation that's not the full 30 seconds long. So that's one way we can edit the overall duration of the project as well. But pretty self-explanatory. Uh, these are your transition layers that transition from one scene to the next. The green layers are your main scenes with your candidates. And then the yellow layers are the intro and end tag. That's pretty much it for the intro. Moving on to the supplementals folder. You'll see uh, there's a folder for the backgrounds. We open that up. Again, pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you edited the, the colors in the customized appearance portion, nothing really to do here. This is just a loopable background that we can use for anything that we need. Uh, we have our lower thirds. Um, two different options in here. There is uh, the candidate name ID lower third and then the standard lower third. Uh, the name ID lower third, we have candidate one set up here. If we twirl that open, uh, this is where we would place whatever candidate headshot. So the uh, face or the, uh, the actual image of the candidate, if we wanted them to be displayed within our candidate name, that would appear right here within this little box. That's, that's where their face would appear. Now, clearly we're probably gonna need more than one candidate. So we can duplicate this by just highlighting it and then hitting Command D as many times as we need. And then we just go into here and then change the number as far as candidate one or candidate two. We change the name to candidate two and candidate three and so on. And then when we open up candidate lower third two, all we have to do is swap out this layer for candidate two. So um, if we highlight the layer and then while holding down the option key, click and drag headshot two on top of there, you'll see that it updated. So all we have to do, just to show you that again, highlight the layer in the timeline, click and drag the composition from the project window while holding down the option key or the alt key, I think on a PC and click and release right on top of that layer and it updates that comp. And that's how you add additional candidates to uh, the lower third lineup. The standard lower third, basically the same thing. Um, you can use these for questions, um, you know, whatever. This blank area here is where we would import the network icon back in the network icon composition. Uh, so we can put whatever we need to in there. Um, we could change the position of these layers if we would rather the smaller text on top. We could just highlight these layers, hit the anchor key or uh, anchor tag, uh, A on the keyboard, and then move these around. So the smaller text is on top, something like that. And we could also duplicate these comps as many times as we need for as many lower thirds as we need. Side panels, very self-explanatory. Already pre-animated, pre-rendered. Um, with editable text layers. And split screen, this is where we can uh, we could place footage behind here to separate two clips of footage. 
Same thing with the full screen. Uh, we can add two clips of footage behind these windows uh, and edit the text here and create our own custom split, scene, split screen graphic. But I think that pretty much covers everything. I don't believe I missed anything, but uh, as usual, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, we can be reached on our Video Hive profile. Uh, just navigate to the Motion Revolver uh, pro, uh, the Motion Revolver profile page on the Video Hive Marketplace, and there's an email form on the bottom right portion of the screen that you can email us. Otherwise, you can contact us at Tyson at MotionRevolver.com. And uh, once again, thanks a lot for purchasing the Debate Night Project, and best of luck with your project. Thank you.